why you think you are right, even though the facts are that you are wrong. The three videos which follow, which accompany this uh, teaching, show a psychology reason why people make a certain decisions contrary to the facts. That is the link in the title, just under the title. And two examples of the fatal and almost fatal severe consequences of one person who was hanged because the jury was convinced he was guilty. And fortunately for the other one, he was released after 20 years of imprisonment. The same psychology is behind why many people strongly believe on truths about what they read in the Bible or their faith religious books. They belong to denominations that can be spiritually fatal to their lives if they do not, as it says in Revelation 18.4, um, come out of their denominations. It reads, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Are you a scout or a soldier mentality? Are you always willing to ask, Have I got it right, God? As a title of the book available for free download from the forward to yahweh.com uh, resources ebook page. Or are you limiting yourself to comparing yourself with those of your own belief, which is not wise, as the Bible says in Corinthians? Do you want to hear smooth things rather than risk being proven wrong? Second Corinthians 10 verse 12 For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measure themselves by themselves, not of the same denominations or beliefs, and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Isaiah 30 verse 9 That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh, which say to the seers, See not, and the prophets prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, Prophesy deceits. Also remember Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. All around the world, due to COVID-19 lockdown, many people were at home. Some on paid leave. Some industries employees are still at home, receiving pay. Um, I think that's all stopped now, that's the furlough thing. Some are working from home, which saves them at least a couple of hours per day of changing their clothes um, and not traveling to work, to and from work and so on. Being home for 10 weeks could be about 500 hours. This teaching was done last year when we were in lockdown. Uh, five hours, that is five hours of payment to stay at home and study the difference between what you biblically practice and other denominations and what God actually wants us to do. So though people working from home now, in though when it was a lockdown, there was no working from home, they were just on furlough, paid leave. So how many spent those 500 of paid time to study commandments and the word of God? Not from what your denomination says, but its adversaries. In other words, to hear the arguments against your beliefs. So you can prove all things or have an answer for why you believe what you believe compared to others who believe other things. Or even better, simply reading the every word of God first, Deuteronomy, Genesis to Deuteronomy, which is God's law, where he himself spoke and gave us his instructions. And comparing it to the history and message thereafter, i.e. Joshua to Malachi. What happened to them when they disobeyed God's law and so forth. And also the prophets and the Psalms. In other words, the three main things that Yeshua Messiah said spoke of him. The law, the prophets and the Psalms. The teachings of the Messiah 
and whether he changes or could change his father's words, being the, did he change them in the Gospels? Now, if you look at John chapter 17, verse 2 and 3, Yeshua says he came to bring people back to God, <clears throat> not to take them away from him by them following different commandments. He is the way to get forgiveness of our, trans of our sins, forgiveness by God. So he's the way, not their destination. Remember, Yeshua is the word of God. John chapters 1, verses 1 to 2 and 14. Just that word of God was manifested into a visual human being who we can see, because no one can see the actual real God and live in being a spirit. Lastly, what the apostles taught in the book of Acts, which covers all the, their ministry and time period, inclusive of the times of Paul's epistle writings. Now, um, you can see a teaching that goes through all the book of Acts, either on forwardtoyahweh.com, as it shows there, or on the YouTube channel of Forward To, and then the separate word Yahweh, um, that has the Apostles' Doctrine in six parts. Goes through all the book, book of Acts, um, see exactly what the Apostles taught. And what you see they taught was the Kingdom of Commandments of God, just as it says in Acts chapter 7, 38, they received oracles to pass on to us. But they're now also practicing faith in the Messiah, the promised Messiah that God told Moses he would send someone like his brethren. So that was it. Um, keep the commandments of God, and if you transgress, have faith in his Son for the forgiveness of your sins. Nothing else. And the book of Acts where Paul went said some believed and some, some didn't believe. And it was they believed in the Messiah, that he was the one promised, or they believed he wasn't the one Messiah. But he did not, they did not teach anything about grace or anything about, um, you know, all the other reasons that is used not to keep God's law. And even if they used faith, um, Paul in Galatians chapter 2 verse 17 says that through, sorry, grace, um, we can, if we try to be justified by Christ, we still have to keep the law. Yes, Galatians 2.17, that was my paraphrasing of it. Now, all churches are presently online and have been so for the last 10 weeks. Again, as I said, this teaching was done in the last year. Your weekly pattern has therefore changed. What led you to attend your former church should no longer be a hold on you to return when they open. You have had weeks in the wilderness as Moses and John the Baptist had to detox of former theologies. And those read your Bible should have been of read the Bible and see the difference. Will you emerge from will you emerge more obedient to God or cling to your denominational errors? Keeping the holy days of God as in Leviticus twenty three or that of traditions of men, men's creation. With a renewed mind or same stale one. Will you know who really are the Gentiles of the New Testament or continue to think of the wrong people? In other words, if you read the Apostles' Doctrine, part two, you'll see the Gentiles were actually Israelites. They were not natural Gentiles of other nations. They were Israelites living in other nations because the word Gentiles just means other nations, other countries. And when um, they were scattered um, by the Syrians, that's where they went and resided. Hence, on the day of Pentecost, they came to Jerusalem um, to keep the day of Pentecost, and they came from all those things. They were Israelites. Um, and again, when you see people are convinced that when Paul says he'll go to the Gentiles, they think he's going to go to non-Israelites. But if you read again the Apostles' Doctrine, um, you'll see all the when Paul did subsequent go places he went into he went to other nations or the gentile cities but he went into the synagogues where the jews were and taught them and any greeks that happened to be there as well so paul went to other nations to teach the israelites of the promised messiah he did not go to natural gentiles big misconception so as i said this is covered in the apostles doctrine article but as a hint see james chapters 1 verse 1 which says james a servant of god of the lord yeshua 
to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Also 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Yeshua, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. So you see there were Gen Israelites scattered and Peter and James was writing them letters um, about the Apostle Messiah and Paul and Barnabas actually went to them. So that all the Israelites would know and hopefully merge into this original 12, back to the original 12 tribes. The apostles will con try and convert the ones in Jerusalem as Stephen tried to do before he was stoned and Paul and Barnabas would mainly go and teach the, other, the Jews in the other nations. And as I said in, in, in the Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, it reads, verse 5, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Verse 10, Jews and proselytes, a proselyte being a convert to God's laws, as given to the Jews, as was Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 1, and also Ruth um, in the Old Testament. So Acts chapter 10 verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God all ways. Acts chapter 17 verse 1, there you see Cornelius was a um, proselyte, converted to the God of the Israelites. Acts chapter 17 verse 1 Now when they had passed through Amphilopolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Acts chapter 13 verse 26 Paul speaking and addressing the audience, Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, being Israelites, and whosoever among you fear of God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. So all of those who wanted to convert and, and learn about um, the God of the Israelites, that's where they went, in the synagogue. And it's the same thing we read in Acts chapter 15, verse 21. They were always in the synagogue. Okay, coming on to these three videos.
wrongdoing, no motive as far as they could tell. But Dreyfus was the only Jewish officer at that rank in the army. Uh, and unfortunately, at this time, the French army was uh, highly anti-Semitic. So they compared Dreyfus's handwriting to that on the memo and concluded that it was a match. Uh, even though outside professional handwriting experts were much less confident in the similarity, but never mind that. They went and searched Dreyfus's apartment, looking for any signs of espionage. They went through his files, and they didn't find anything. And this just convinced them more that Dreyfus was not only guilty, but sneaky as well, because clearly he had hidden all of the evidence before they had managed to get to it. Next, they went and looked through his personal history for any incriminating details. They talked to his teachers. They found that he had studied foreign languages in school, uh, which clearly showed a desire to conspire with foreign governments in later in life. Uh, his teachers also said that Dreyfus had a good memory, and, you know, known for having a good memory, which was highly suspicious, right? You know, because a spy has to remember a lot of things. So, the case went to trial, and Dreyfus was found guilty. Uh, and afterwards, they took him out into this public square and ritualistically tore his insignia from his uniform and broke his sword in two. This was called the degradation of Dreyfus. And they sentenced him to life imprisonment on the aptly named Devil Island, which is this barren rock off the coast of South America. So there he went, uh, and there he spent his days alone, writing letters and letters to the French government, begging them to reopen his case so they could discover his innocence. But for the most part, France considered the matter closed. So one thing that's really interesting to me about the Dreyfus affair is this question of why the officers were so convinced that Dreyfus was guilty. I mean, you might even assume that, that they were setting him up, that they were intentionally framing him, uh, but historians don't think that's what happened. As far as we can tell, the officers genuinely believed that the case against Dreyfus was strong, which you know, makes you wonder, <laughs> what does it say about the human mind that we can find such paltry evidence to be compelling enough to convict a man? Well, this is a case of what scientists motivated reasoning. It's this phenomenon in which our unconscious motivations, our desires and fears, shape the way we interpret information. So some information, some ideas feel like our allies, and we want, we want them to win. We want to defend them. And other information or ideas are the enemy, and we want to shoot them down. So uh, this is why I call motivated reasoning soldier mindset. And probably most of you have never persecuted a French Jewish officer for high treason, I assume, uh, but maybe you follow sports or politics. So you might have noticed that uh, when the referee judges that your team committed a foul, for example, uh, you're highly motivated to find reasons why he's wrong. But if he judges that the other team committed a foul, awesome, it's a good call. Let's not examine it too closely. Um, or maybe you've read an article or a study that examined some controversial policy, like capital punishment. And as researchers have demonstrated, if, if you support capital punishment and the study shows that it's not effective, um, then you're highly motivated to find all the reasons uh, why the study was poorly designed. But if it shows that capital punishment works, awesome, it's a good study. And vice versa, if you don't support capital punishment, same thing. Um, our judgment is just strongly influenced unconsciously by which side we want to win. And this is ubiquitous. It shapes how we think about our health, um, our relationships, how we decide how to vote, uh, what we consider fair or ethical. And what's most scary to me about motivated reasoning or soldier mindset is how unconscious it is. You know, we can think we're being objective and fair-minded and still wind up ruining the life of an innocent man. However, fortunately for Dreyfus, his story is not over. This is Colonel Picard. This is another high-ranking officer in the French army. And like most people, he assumes Dreyfus was guilty. Also, like most people in the army, he was at least casually anti-Semitic. But at a certain point, Picard began to suspect, oh, what if we we're all wrong about Dreyfus? And what happened was that he had discovered evidence that the spying for Germany had continued even after Dreyfus was in prison. And he had also discovered that another officer in the army had handwriting that perfectly matched the memo, much closer than Dreyfus's handwriting. So he brought these discoveries to his superiors, uh, but to, to his dismay, they either didn't care or came up with elaborate rationalizations to explain his findings, like, uh, well, all you've really shown, Picard, is that there's another spy who, who learned how to mimic Dreyfus's handwriting, and, and he you know, picked up the torch of spying.
lying after Dreyfus left. But Dreyfus is still guilty. Eventually, Picard managed to get Dreyfus exonerated, but it took him ten years, and for part of that time, he himself was in prison for the crime of disloyalty to the army. So, you know, a lot of people feel like Picard can't really be the hero of this story, because he's an anti-Semite, and that's bad, which I agree with. But personally, for me, the fact that Picard was anti-Semitic actually makes his actions more admirable. So in that video, we learnt not to let emotions um, influence your judgment, or unless that in that emotion is to spur you on, say, to build a ship, to want to see the go on the sea to build a ship. It's the same thing that the devil used with Eve. He made her desire to be wise, and therefore that took away her logic of following God's commandments, which which she knew. And so that is why we have so much um, wrong beliefs in different denominations because they start them and they f go by feelings such as I want to be like God or the apostles, I want to be a prophet, I want to be a pastor, I want a gift. 
and the adopt things which are unbiblical. Um, you do not see it in God's instructions. They use ambiguous instructions or things of Paul and conclude that they can speak in tongues because everyone gets a gift of speaking in tongues or either baptism or so forth or everyone gets the Holy Spirit living in them or that we can now worship God on any day rather than the commanded day of God on the seventh day Sabbath or Leviticus 23. And that's why God did say that um, because people want to do the wrong things he was, I don't know, no, 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 no the exact verse but he'll send them a, a lie that's because they, they just want what to do. And Paul says to Timothy, study to make yourself approved, rightly, dis rightly discerning um, the word of truth. You know, you have to be like the Bereans who had the readiness of mind to learn and be proud of learning and accept when you're wrong, as she says, and not um, go by what you want to, to go because you want to belong, stay belonging to your church or stay belonging to the main main. Um, group rather than be like um, Elijah or um, Elisha who stayed in their cave when Ahab and Jezebel was doing the wrong thing they would rather be on their own. Okay so this next video um, is a consequence of when people go by feelings in this case prejudice. So a consequence of um, having prejudice, I urge you to not have the prejudice because it could be fatal. Like those in Matthew um, 7, 21 to 23, which thought they did the right thing, but Yeshua told them he never knew them. Not, meaning not even at their baptism or all the times they went to church and paid their tithes and all the good works they thought they were doing, they were in the wrong system believing the wrong things. So, believe God. Do not believe your wrong interpretation or your denomination's interpretations of Paul's writings. Because as Second Peter, I think Second Peter 3.16 says, those who are unlearned um, do not understand Paul's writings and therefore misinterpret it. It says, I think it's 1 Timothy verse 7, they desire to be teachers of the law, not understanding God's law at all. If they think that Paul can change God's laws, it is because psychologically, as the first video says, that is what they want to do. The third and last video, a man jailed after a woman said she dreamt he raped her has been released from imprisonment after 28 days. So how can that be evidence? Because the ones who um, convicted him wanted it so.
So, if you want more information um, on the system that God instituted, find this book, Have I Got It Right, God? A question we should all be asking ourselves. It is a biblical, meaning all the Bible scriptures, a historical, meaning covering the history of some of the traditions of men, and obviously a logical appraisal to understanding your Bible and how to worship God as he wanted. And I say logical in the sense that most people think that when Yeshua died, let's say at three o'clock, that things changed. They now came under grace or came under faith or the system changed. So anyone who died at 259 as a sinner or breaking God's laws will be punished one way, um, go to hell, and those who survived to 301 p.m. will now come under grace and be excused for their sin. They can now be a transgressor of God's law. They can now not keep the Sabbath days and all the things that he said that they are to do and not to do, they can turn it all upside down and do what he said not to do and don't do what he said to do. That is illogical. Anyway, you can get this on the website forward to Yahweh.com the resources page and the ebook section. Um, just click the book and download it or read it online. Shalom.